Last week we made this mold from this horse. And if you recall, if you watched that video, I had to break the horse off to make the mold, to make the cuts. There was just no way to do the cuts with the, with the base in the way. So that was unfortunate, but no worries. We've got the mold, but you may also recall, we had a little flaw in the mold in the form of a miscut. And uh, miscuts are no fun. You never want to see one. You never want to cut a one piece mold into multiple pieces. Uh, I just went down the wrong side of the leg and I trapped this piece of rubber, no way to get it out. So I had to cut it free. We're going to cast this mold with this piece in place. Somebody asked in the comments, could I just glue it back in, you know, put a little more rubber on there and push it in and glue it back in. The answer is yes, you could. But the truth of the matter is no matter how carefully you do that, you're always going to have a little bit of thickness of rubber, which pushes this piece out of alignment, which means that whole area of the mold will be slightly, ever so slightly opened up and you're just going to have a mess of parting lines right around this. I think we're going to get a cleaner cast by simply nestling this part back where it belongs in the mold and casting it and casting the mold with it in place. What we've got going here is a nice box square mold, which is not very ideal. It would be much better for this to be a round mold, but here, let's break out the old butcher paper and let's mark out our mold and we'll illustrate the problem. In a perfect world, you would want this mold to be round like that. Nice and round, big round mold. But if you did, look how much rubber you'd be wasting. I mean, keep in mind, the horse is living in here like this. So we already have a tremendous amount of, of, of rubber surrounding the model. And if you'll recall, we filled it up beautifully last week with chunkage. Chunks of rubber is all very beautiful. But there's a reason that you use a round mold instead of a square mold. And uh, that is because it's very hard to put even pressure on a mold. A round mold puts even pressure from every direction all the way around. And you get nice, even closing pressure all the way around. I used to wonder why I always had gaps in the middle. My, my, my outer edges would close up really beautiful, but I'd get a lot of flashing in the middle of models. And that's when I discovered that in a flat mold, no matter how hard you push, the rubber bands don't push in the middle. They just don't. So you can't have a, a box mold and expect your parting lines not to be open in the middle. See that parting line right there? Those parting lines? When I push, if you notice, when I push on the side, see I'm pushing on the side. Notice how they're not closing up? They're just, they're, they don't close up. And that's because that parting line is at such a steep angle to the direction of the pull that it, it, just, won't, it just won't close. So what you got to do is you got to have gentle, even pressure from all around. And notice, see what just happened? It disappeared. The parting lines are totally closed up. And that's because I'm squeezing from all around the mold. And you just can't do that in a square mold. You've got to do it in a round mold. So the obvious solution is to mimic a round mold by building a cradle. Not only do we have to build a cradle for this mold, we have another problem. It doesn't fit in the tank. <laughs> It just don't go. So I'm thinking it is time that we do a little bit of mold sculpting. To sculpt this mold, we're just going to make some cuts. But I just noticed something. And I, I've been pouring this rubber for 30 years. And I, it's doing something that I've never, ever seen it do before. What is going on with this? There's a little line of uncured hardener running around the rim of the mold. Look at that. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I have never seen that before. I don't know what it's doing. Just kind of wiping it off. That's weird, man. <sighs> it's helpful to know your materials, but even if you know your materials, sometimes they'll just do weird stuff to you. I'm not sure what caused that. But, all right, let's get on with it. No, no, 
mysteries abound. Life is full of them. All right, so the first thing we need to do to cut this mold is make it fit into the tank. And I'm just going to take and bevel this edge. And the easy way to cut rubber, by far the easiest way to cut rubber, is to stretch it. It's hard to cut until you stretch it. And then if you stretch it, it cuts clean and easy, just like that. Just like that, easy. Not a worry in the world. We need to bevel this edge so that it can go in the tank. Now to mimic a round mold, we're gonna build a case in a minute, but the other thing we can do to do that is because it's such a chunky and because the horse is, you can see, is quite, there's quite a bit of material around the horse, I think we can safely take this corner and just bevel it. Let's see if we can get a good hold on it. Now you can see I'm kind of doing not a clean job of it very much, but it doesn't really matter because all the, all the, all the jaggies will do is kind of help hold the rubber bands in place. Should not be a problem. You can also switch to a utility knife. That might work better. Yeah, that's going to work better for this. And the other thing you can do is you can see the chunkies buried in there. See those? Look at all our little chunkies happy buried in there. So that is going to make that rounder. You can sculpt your mold to your heart's content, but what it will do is it'll, again, more mimic the round mold. It'll put pressure around. It won't just crimp the corners. If you have sharp corners, all of the pressure is right along here on the corners, and that's not ideal. So I'll go ahead and do this on these corners, just bevel them over. So I just want to keep this concept in your head. You can sculpt your molds. I got this thing sculpted up, and it's possibly the most Barney Rubble looking thing I've ever sculpted. <laughs> it's from the Betty and Barney Rubble school of mold making. But guess what? It fits into the tank, slides right in, just barely. And I went ahead and I built a couple of little, uh, well, these are cradle parts. It's not a full cradle, just a partial cradle, but they'll work. And you may be wondering, why are they so rough across here? Good question. It's to hold the rubber bands better. So let's get these things in place. Work like a champ. Right, that's already, I mean, that is already really closing up nice. Holy moly. Just two rubber bands on there. And that thing has just shut itself up nice and tight. You can see that it's pulling in a kind of a round way. A few more bands won't hurt anything. Put a few more on. I don't need any rubber bands down here because there's no cut down in here. The cuts are all in the top part, front part of the mold here. There's no cuts down here. I think that's it. Look at that. Let me see if I can get this pretty on this side. Make sure that it's all even. You know what I love? I love even, gentle pressure from as much, so many sides as possible. You look down in there, that's just, that's just beautifully closed up. It's just, it's just gonna work just fine. And go all the way around, make sure, pull it into place. Oh yeah, nice. All right, let's mix some resin and make our first casting. I filled them all through the back legs and that poured out just fine, but I trapped one of the four legs, meaning I didn't fill it all the way and I blocked the entrance uh, to, the, <laughs> to the rest of the leg. So as you see me doing it here, I'm trickling the resin down through the vent at the tip of that hoof and filling the rest of the cavity that way. And it actually worked out really well to do it. So then all that was left was to fill the base and the casting was ready to go. And by the way, I put each successive casting into the pressure pot. So it actually went in and out of the pressure pot four times. The horse came out of the mold just fine. It was very clean and had very, very light parting lines. Here you can see the little chunky that's trapped between the tail and the legs as just from making that bad cut, but it did its job perfectly and I got almost no parting lines around it in that area, so very little cleanup. I was pleased with that. It's a new day and uh, it's cold, it's early in the morning, and we're gonna try to pour this in simpler than we poured the first one. Now we have one big advantage, we know how much this weighs, 230 grams, and so let's go measure out 230 grams of resin and pour this mold. 
because it's so cold, I'd like to pour it in a single shot. See if it works. All right, let's stir this up. And if this is an experiment, let's see if we can get it. I'm gonna pour it quickly. I'm squeezing the mold. I think I've got the horse filled now. And I think we have pulled it off. Yeah, look at that, filled. Now I'm squeezing the mold and shaking and vibrating. That's to see if I can shake any other bubbles loose. Of course, we're gonna pressure pot it. We'll see what we got. Let's put it in the pot. Time to check the witness cup. Perfect, hard as a rock. Let's do it. Pulled it out of the tank. Let's get this thing taken apart, see what we got. This is the second casting, single pour. Question, did we do any good or not? How do we do? How do we do? Let's take a look. Okay, let's pull it apart. Tail cast good, just looking at the tail. Okay, okay, that's a good start. It's a beginning, it's a beginning. Hoof cast, all right. That front sticking out hoof filled and the whole vent filled. That's a good start. Ooh. And I got one interesting area. I'll show you in a minute. Pop that out, look at that. Look at that. Very cool, nice. So far, so good. Let's check it out. All right. Same deal as before. We have the little locked in part, but as you can see, it's doing its job. No problems. Things doing its job, casting that little inner part. Now, some of you are gonna get the idea that I'm full of it, and I tell you not to do this, not to cut these into pieces, but I wanna tell you, this doesn't have to be here. <laughs> if I had cut it in here, if I had cut it in the right place, this would not be trapped in here, it would be in here, and I wouldn't have these horrible difficulties with each and every casting. I've gotta coax this little part out of here. And it's rubber, it comes out, I get it out, no problem. One extra step, a little more time. All right, enough of that. Let's talk, let me put this for safekeeping back in its mold and let's see what we did, boy. Okay, so right away, I see that this elbow is a problem area. It tends to want to catch a bubble there, so that would have been a good place for a second vent. Uh, the parting line, however, is over here, so I probably would have had to cross it. But anyway, I would put a vent there. This is a very easy fix, not gonna cause us a lot of problems. Interestingly, I caught a bubble. I can see that very well. I caught a bubble in the belly right there. Can you, can you see that from that camera? Right in there, I caught a bubble. Pretty wicked bubble. Again, easy to fix. You always want your bubbles where they're easy to fix. <laughs> you don't want bubbles right in the middle of the face. Uh, speaking of which, no bubbles in the face this time. Cast perfectly, ears cast perfectly, face looks fine. So I'm seeing two bubbles, both in places that I can live with. That's the idea, you know. Uh, perfection is the enemy of excellent. Perfection is the enemy of good. Uh, most of the time you're not gonna get perfect castings, but if you get good castings that are reasonably easy to clean, meanwhile, the parting lines are just super minimal, just the way you, exactly the way you want to see them. You're always going to have parting lines. You just don't want big, massive, honking, horrible parting lines you're going to spend hours cleaning up. I'm going to send one casting to Chris that's pretty much cleaned up. I did not patch the bubbles. I'm going to let him do that. And I'm going to send him one that needs to be cleaned so he can see what he'll get out of the mold and more or less what he'll wind up with. Hey, if you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. I hope you got something out of this video and I will see you next week.